the devil you don't. He started out as just a wayward scrap of light and now consumes whatever he chooses, cutting a stolen strain of lyrical ease with his own. His heart rolls into the palm of his hand and waits there like a blister in a tree. The faint alluring radiance that twitches over the black sea floor held up by a fish made of teeth and to which are drawn smaller things, this is how he tries to love. Were he to put flesh on you, it would be flame. Were he to pick you up, then drop you, all through the burning sky would you fall. And burning still, you would rip a hole in the sea, the boiling sea. He turns angels into the same fire that melts the guts of the earth or spews unbearably out of stars, then makes of their wings endless chains from which to swing. When the planet Spontanel yields to his fingerings, he rides, rides, covers his ears against a rumor he cannot bear. His aliases crackle over the airport speakers, but they are nowhere and are never going home. Not for a moment does he wish for us to give up our gods. Renounce, he says, and shrugs, renounce, and still you die, and nothing else. But no one is listening. The poor have stopped. The rest likely never began. Here's the best way to see a thing. Catch the edge of light that burns around its opposite, that which it would otherwise obscure. If we could view this light entire, we would call it God. But then, if we saw collected in one place all the ants or all the abandoned cars or all the dust in the world, we would surely make that thing God instead. I am going to pull the music from your mouth and furthermore, I'll take the orange aching light that splits your ribs when I or any beautiful things come at you. He rolls by on a skateboard, chased by snakes of smoke. Helicopters rear and waver all around him, gusting down the avenue toward the fissured monuments, kicking up a blast of helices that settle like pollen in a glittering layer over everyone. He adores the show, the high tech of it, the low, but don't broach evil, don't bore him so. Clearly this is no St. Patty's Day parade, and he's neither headed off to some seminar nor giving you the eye. He's going to stick to the roof of someone's mouth, American palate, quintessential mistrust. He writes fortunes in clear lip gloss on a funhouse mirror as the oracles take down their tents and their oracular fountains bubble in the rhyming night. One finger in. Now say what you want more than anything else. From serrated streaks of fire, he fashions a subcutaneous matrix, sight lines to further green vistas. The tributes of the origamists don't last long, but the sound of burning swans blown down a path to the river makes music enough for him. Kids roll hash into their cigarettes, and spotlights turn the smoke pink in the trees. If he'd had a childhood, he'd have spent it running under sprinklers to cool his smoldering skin. He made other arrangements, and found no need for cruelty in his hell as metaphor, wherein he was more often tempted than the tempter, watching evolution, each new thing. Now admirers call him up to say they've seen him on TV and are preparing another way. Such is the devotion he endures as everywhere a boiling dew saturates the buildings till they fall. Oppenheim's cup and the smell of static arouse him. What other distortions has he surmounted? Within what circles of pleasure has he flexed? The powers that bore have flown in from the east, a locust wave blotting out the scenery. Their bodies pile up in black drifts through which he later slaloms. Plastic flowers warp in the crematorium, smother the undertaker with their fumes. As he rearranges body parts, the sex grows gigantic, the messiest yet. Take him by the tail and see better at night. Swiveling armatures, nothing your misdeed. Randy boy and roguish looking for a light. Watch the wind turn to whips that tangle in the stars. His gift to you.
He strides through a field of rubies as comets trail from his horns. Astronauts mistake the streaks for a runway somewhere safe. This is the version they invent when we pull them from the trees and send them home. Did the president just say, I readjust my horned suit, causing our screens to flush and flicker blood? On American highways, cars hydroplane through the acid foam that slides from blazing angels' flanks. When the press corps cranes its collective neck to get a better view, the devil turns water into glass under the lectern to steam, then absconds with his toy piano under one arm and a seashell pressed to his glowing mouth, leaving the president who is not the president trapped in a red room. You can pretend I live in a burning box underground, that you'd know me if you saw me, but I don't, and you never do. His smile is an electric fence, spitting an amazement of scarlet flowers into the night. Hell also has a sky, the world being devoured by the sun. Abominable fancy, slide us across the burning lawns. That which doesn't kill us is merely waiting. It will. <laughs> Flattery will get you started, boy. Hell is coming. Hell is here. Peter Davis. who lives in this home and makes a number of bad guy fighting tools and weapons. Sometimes giant robot bad guys try to kill this poem by bopping it on its head, but this poem doesn't allow that and sends ninjas and wizards out to reverse time and destroy the robots. <laughs> Dr. Defense jumps up and kicks everyone in the face and he, like, flies through a window and then, like, <laughs> this poem explodes. <laughs> This is home addressing people who are tired, hungry, or horny. <laughs> These things can wait. This is a very good poem, and you'd be very myopic to lose sight of this beauty simply because some of your baser needs are asserting themselves. <laughs> I'll keep this short, but you should exercise some control, okay? <laughs> Stay with me here. Allow this poem to carry you beyond yourself, transcending your mortal flesh as you wed yourself with the potentially infinite. This is a um, poem addressing people with certain expectations about poetry that are not fulfilled in this poem. <laughs> Change. <laughs> This is poem addressing prisoners. How you found them, how this found you, I don't know, but this is a good event, a good omen. Not because it's mystical or mysterious, but because you're actually reading this poem and I have actually written it. I know that this poem is a sort of prison too, but it's a much, much more beautiful one. Thank you. <laughs> 